Hello and welcome back to an introduction to time series. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, trends in time series. Um, so the reason I want to talk about this is that in time series trends plays, uh, or a trend in a time series plays an important role uh, when it comes to predicting things. Uh, in the REMA model it takes care of predicting uh, out a trend, but uh, trend definitely plays a role in things like stationarity um, and being able to predict the next observation because uh, essentially, if all of your observations from the previous data set are less than your next observation, depending on the model, certain models won't pick up that your, your data set is growing. So this last point here, you'll see it says trends can lead to underestimating future observations. And depending on the model, that's true. Um, obviously, I wouldn't recommend using the average method, but using the average method, you would constantly underestimate because as the average changes, sure, it's changing, but you'd constantly be underestimating. Um, and then obviously you, you're altering the mean and variance. And if you recall why that's important, that's because your, your data set is no longer stationary. Once your, your uh, mean and variance, or your means and variance, however you want to say it, um, change over time. There's of course, if you recall a uh, trend stationarity, which just refers to the fact that a data set is stationary once you remove the trend. So, so sometimes the data set even or might still be stationary if you remove the trend. So it's important to kind of realize how to uh, remove it. And most data sets do, will have some form of trend. You know, if you're, if you're looking at, for instance, company revenue or company costs, you know, you'll see an increase most likely in both of those because over time things grow. And it's important to kind of look at that. So let's look at some examples of this in R. And for this example, I'm going to be using the AUS beer data set. Um, you can find this in the library FPP. Um, this data set is basically sales um, and we're going to just basically use the window function uh, on the AUS beer data set. Again, this is a public data set, so you just need to say this. There's nothing to load. Um, and using the window function basically will pull out just a section of it. So you say start and end, um, however you want to pull it out. This data set's pretty long, so I only wanted to pull out a section of it. So if we look at this data set, it's very different than if you recall the air passengers data set. Uh, unlike the air passengers data set, this is a very consistent data set. Um, yes, there's this kind of the straighter portion here at the beginning, and then there's kind of this consistent growth afterwards, but the uh, seasonality seems to be very, very consistent. And even the trend seems to be very consistent. So this model is clearly more of an additive model. If you recall talking about multiplicative and additive. Um, so this, this model, if I were to pull this out and break this down, I would take seasonality plus trend plus the random leftover noise because this data set doesn't seem to, to have any form of exponential growth. Now, in order to get the trend from this data set, uh, if you recall, using the decompose function, for instance, actually uses basically what is the moving average. Um, and you can basically get the moving average to find that rate of change over a four month, in this case, four month, if you see this order equals four, uh, points of data. So you get that average uh, movement essentially, and that will be your trend. So if I were to run this and then plot this, you're going to kind of see, I'm going to plot it against the uh, the initial data. You're kind of going to see this trend that's much more smoothed out. Obviously, you're not going to get uh, any of that bumpiness. It's just a pure trend um, and it follows it pretty closely. And we can basically remove this. We, we, we basically can just take this data and just remove it. So this 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 trend right here, and then if we just say subtract, this will get rid of the trend. Just like I talked about with additive, if you can add it together, you can subtract it, correct? So essentially, just by saying this, um, all I'm left with is whatever is seasonal and whatever it would be residual. So I can basically run this and plot this. And if you look over here, now what you're left with is a very seasonal cyclical time series. Um, and this is much would be much easier to predict because there's this really, really consistent up and down. Yes, at the very end, there's kind of this large growth, but overall there's, 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 there's a consistent mean, there's consistent variance. So this time series becomes much easier to predict. And that's our goal when we start doing things like detrending or, or including trend into our model. So trend will often just be something along the lines of, you know, plus some, some constant, um, from the previous, uh, observation um, times some coefficient and, and something like that will basically take on the trend role of a data set. 
Um, so thank you so much for paying attention to this. Uh, I'm just trying to give you a, kind of a deeper dive into time series and how you can kind of start pulling things apart before you just start running the auto.arima function because running the auto.arima function is great, but you can really start to break down this data set. You can really start to understand each component and, and that's what I'm really trying to get you to do. So if you have any questions about you know, understanding the, the deeper patterns into data sets and, and however I can might be able to help you, you know, please feel free to send out a message and uh, thanks so much for listening.